Better stop that before uh, copyright gets me. Anyway, if you went down and bought a new razor or side by side or you've had one for a while and you want to put some tunes in it, but you've looked at the prices of these things, you know, uh, pro boxes, $1,500, $800, just depends on what you're looking for. And it just is not worth the money to be going around pounding out $1,500 just for tunes in the woods. Some people like it. In this case, you probably looking for something that is uh, not cheap, but uh, you know, budget worthy. And this is what this video is about. I'm going to show you a system that I got. It was a Christmas present. I'm going to show you how I installed it, and I'm going to show you how it works. And uh, I've had it out in the woods quite a few times, and it's still working nice. It sounds really good in the rig. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you. We'll start out with the install and we'll go from there. Well, hey all you mud lovers. Welcome to the Subtech Off-Road Life channel. But today we are not going to go out on the trails, but we're going to prepare ourselves to have a little music while we're out here on the trails. Now, this was a Christmas present from my wife and my daughter. They really like to have tunes when we're out on the trails. I have tend to steer away from the tunes just because of copyright issues when I'm filming stuff. So. There's going to have to be a little give and take whenever this, this is running. Uh, if I need to film something, I need to turn it off. With all that said, isn't this a great Christmas present? I mean, they always come up with the greatest stuff for me. I'm one of the luckiest men in the world. Anyway, this is, um, they picked it out and bought it. So I didn't have any uh, decision in what was picked out or not. So this is what we're going to hook up today. I'm not, not even sure where it's from. It's a... Uh, no am or no aim or something like that. It's a NUTV four quad. This is a four channel marine four inch uh, UTV ATV and boat audio system with Bluetooth. It's four channel. It's a four by one hundred watts at four ohms. Uh, anti thump turn on, soft turn on off, Bluetooth streaming, auxiliary input, uh, volume gain remote control. So this looks like. A s Oops. A switch bank here for uh, controlling it. This looks like the harness right here. This of course would be probably the fuse I'm sure and it's definitely made to be watertight there so that's good. And it had the little uh, warning label on it that said uh, this amplifier is a marine amplifier however in order to keep it safe it should never be submerged underwater or cleaned with high pressure spray. Here's the speakers. All right let's uh put this thing together all right first thing to do is take the windshield out take the windshield off so we can figure out so we can get the center console out figure out where all this stuff's going to hook up oh yeah and by the way He's going to change out the graphics and the plastics on the Honda. You go from clear, what color would you call that? Teal? Yes. It's got a whole set of plastics. So we'll kind of monitor the progress on that too. See how it looks when it's done. If you don't mind. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, we're gonna figure this out. I got the windshield off and pull this off. And uh, first thing I think we're gonna mount is the switch, this is the controller, which is this. And I'm kind of thinking it's probably gonna go right here. All right, we're gonna mount the amplifier on top of this little. Glove, glove box hole here and uh, on the inside of the dash that way it's not going to get submerged hopefully not submerged and it won't be hit by the high pressure washer take a little work but we'll get it done already starting to get the teal on the bike too it's looking good already <laughs> wait till we put the graphics on it
Yeah, those will definitely bite you if you in the, at night when you're trying to get someone unstuck and you're trying to put that controller put that controller up in there. <laughs> Sharp edges pointing down there definitely gonna bite your butt. Yeah. Take a chunk out of your skin. So I'm gonna mount these like this. And then then I know where the holes are at. And then I can come back and put the little bolts in there. Yeah. Now we got all the plastics off, all the old plastics off, I should say. All right, we've got it mounted here. Uh, very securely, right above the box here. So it's not going to get hit with a high pressure washer. And it shouldn't get submerged there unless I just do something really stupid. Is that right, Kenny? Yeah. As long as I don't do something stupid, it shouldn't get submerged in there. A little more uh, progress. Got the back fender on. So the next thing to do is uh, try to get this controller mounted right here. And I'm kind of thinking it's going to go right in there. Well, I've got all the plastic back on the bike. Now putting the tires, wheels back on. You're going to do the graphics another day? I'll probably stick one or two on right now. Just to see? Yep, get it started somewhat. Alright, so this is where the controller is going to go. I've cut me a pattern right there. You know, I'll outline it. And then I'll try to carefully use the, the fine saw right here. And uh, cut it out. It's going to be... A slow, careful process. All right, I totally forgot to uh, film when I was cutting the hole, but there's the hole. I probably need to smooth it out just a little bit more. I pulled that sticker off, clean it up a little bit, and then see if that fits in there. But we got plastics back on the bike now. Now we're going for graphics, right? That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's looking nice. Guess I need to go ahead and give a shout out to Melissa. Yeah. Picking yeah. me up with my Christmas present. She yep. said I would never guess what she got me. <laughs> <laughs> she bought both the plastics and the graphics <laughs> for Christmas. And she had her hand in, in the uh, sound system that we got now, too. Her and Mrs. Subtech. Well, let's see if this thing will snap in there. tight might have to sh shave it down just a little bit all right well we're going to try it now put the volume over here where it belongs see if we can snap that into place see I actually need to shave a little bit more down here all right did a little more shaving Let's see if we can get that pop in there almost acting like it wants to but Oops, there we go. I'm wondering if those aren't, if it's such a thick wall that those aren't clicking back and That's probably what hanging it is. in. That's probably what it is. See what I'm saying? There you go. Actually, you could actually thin that wall on each side a little bit where those are at. Let them yeah. pop in. All right, so we have it secured in there. I don't think it's going to rattle its way out, you know, or anything like that to come loose. But it's just perfect to where it's set and snug in there and if you needed to take it out you could reach back in there and pop it back out which would make it better than having it all locked in so next is starting to hook this stuff up plugging it all in all right right here basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this to the constant power of the battery but i'm going to put an on off switch on it just so that uh you know, I can have it on, I can turn off the razor and still have music, but I can also turn this off just in case uh, I don't want the power flowing. Uh, say I get home, turn it off, 
and put it away and it sits here drawing some power for some reason so I'm going to put a, a break in there basically all right uh, we got the hole drilled and we got the button in the switch in and I'll show that to you in a minute but I've been trying to figure out the best way to pull these wires these speaker wires so I've got a an old clothes hanger which I fed from the top down in here it's got uh, a loop bent into it I loop I got two speaker wires going up this side I'm gonna have two speaker wires going up the other side and uh, <coughs> Uh, so I put all two together now this this is going to be the hardest one because I've already got the uh, wire for the LED uh, light bar going through there so the entrance right here is going to be a little tight and then when I pull it through there it's at the top and I'll show you that in a minute the holes on the side of the so it's got to come through at an angle around that uh, LED bar light wire so we're gonna see if we can pull this through here we go all right so here's the end of the coat hanger it's coming up through here um, it would have been nice to be able to run the, the wires through here as well to the back but I also got thinking I might want to move speakers around I know it's gonna be a lot more difficult to try to get the wires through here because at the end there's only a little gap there and the holes closed up the holes smaller than uh, the, the opening of the actual cage so here we go we're going to try to pull this thing through i believe the initial problem will lie right here I'm trying to get this thing to line up just to get it through there first of all Kind of slowly so we're not stripping the wire as we pull through. If that works, we'd be happy. Now I should be able to pull this stuff right on through. hard part okay as promised this is where I put my on off switch and basically what 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 this is doing is when I hooked up power to this unit right here I hooked it from the uh, not accessory but straight power so whether the key is turned on or not I'm getting power okay so I wanted to break that power just in case so I put an on off switch so I ran the power to the switch flip it on now I got power to this okay flip it off now I don't okay so it doesn't matter if I have the key on or not as soon as I flip this on this unit is getting power I hope that makes sense okay back to the wiring here <coughs> these wires will feed down in here and behind here with the uh, with the um, LED bar wire go underneath over to the connections off the, the amp the power amp then of course it goes up through the bar right comes up through the bar it comes out there and it'll go to the speakers which I'll mount back here I have to do the other side for the other two speakers over there once I get those through I'll start mounting speakers and hooking up wires since you've already seen how I did this one there's no reason to watch me do that one so we'll come back once I'm ready to mount speakers and stuff okay the next conundrum or challenge I guess is mounting these speakers and you really only have one option putting them on the cage I mean, unless you want to build something that you could mount these two 
you, you got to put them on the cage. Okay. This space in here is much bigger than the cage. The tubes in the cage. So what they do is they send you a bunch of rubber strips. Four packs. One for each speaker. Three of these long strips. I've already applied one. I'll show you in a second. And two of this length. And two of this length. So I've been scratching my head a bit trying to figure out how this all gets set up. And I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do now. So I've decided I'm going to mount the speaker here. As you can see, I pulled the uh, ta tape off the back of this and got one piece of rubber in there. Uh, I'm also going to mount a speaker up, up here. It's somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. And I'm thinking of mounting it here and pointing it in. Because so on the other side, that one will point that way and kind of help, you know, sp spatialize the sound, if that's even a term. But at the moment, we're trying to figure out how to make sure that this works. So the long ones go around the tube, as far as I can tell. The shorter ones go inside the speaker right there. So let's see if we can make that work. All right. So if you put the bracket together like it's supposed to be, you can kind of see how these are supposed to line up. You can put the short ones in there and then the longer ones will go in there. Okay, now we're gonna fit test this. Yeah, that's pretty tight. All right. That looks like it will actually be enough and here it is with the graphics done looks good okay so we have all four speakers mounted two on the bar here and each one up there now I've turned those in so that this is shooting volume to over there rather than right in the back of the head there and vice versa just try to help kind of keep down the harshness of it don't know if that's really gonna work or not but it looks better let's recap really quick the amp is inside mounted to the top in, inside there which helps it keep from getting uh, deluged with water then the controls are in here I have a power right here it gets full power at all times so I have a switch to, to turn that off in case I don't want it want it going to it I can flip that on and then hold this down and there we go it's coming on now there it found the phone now we're all ready to go the uh, speaker wires two going up through the frame here and two going up through that frame coming around to the speakers well let's see how this works I believe this worked out pretty good eh all right, I'm actually surprised. This is a, is a really nice system. Uh, I didn't, you know, for under $300, I didn't know what I was getting, but uh, it turned out to be really sweet. And it works just fine. I mean, you're not gonna drive out into the woods somewhere, park, and light up the forest with sound, but you're gonna hear it just fine inside the Razor, the Canyon, whatever you're riding around in, and it's gonna be loud enough. In fact, you'll be turning it down because it's gonna be hurting your ears. Uh, like I said, it's the, it's the GNOME NUTV4 that I put in. They do an NUTV5. I imagine it's probably a little bit, little bit bigger of a system. I don't know what the cost on the 5 is, but uh, this last I checked was under $300, and I think it's well worth the money. So, and like I said, I've had it out three or four times now. It's been through the mud. Uh, it's been washed. It, it, the razor's not too clean right now. I just got back. But 
I have had I have had it through the cycle of getting washed. One thing I was concerned about, and I didn't know because I hadn't messed with the marine uh, speakers before, was the 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 paper inside the speakers themselves. You know, what do you do when you get mud on? I mean, is that going to ruin it? And obviously, it's a marine speaker, and it's developed so that uh, that doesn't hurt it. I've been able to spray it out, no problem, still works, as you heard. So. If you're interested, there is links below. Go through there. Uh, you can either purchase that or you can search for uh, a different system. But for the money, to me, this is well worth it. And you're not spending buco bucks just to have some tunes out there. It's all a Bluetooth to your phone or whatever device you get used. There's also an auxiliary an auxiliary jack, so you could you know put something else in there if you need to. Uh, really nice system. I'm actually quite impressed with it. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, if you do get it, you'll enjoy it just like I do. Or maybe the 5. It's probably a little bit uh, more powerful of a system. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, I do all kinds of uh, riding videos. Um, a lot of repair videos going to be coming up. In installation videos. Uh, you know, just upgrade kind of stuff for... Not only the Razor, but uh, the four-wheeler as well. Um, I try to get a video a video out at least once a week, sometimes more if I can. And uh, if you haven't yet done so, please go to my Facebook page and my uh, Instagram page. They're both uh, Subtac Off-Road Life. Give them likes, follows, whatever they need. I need those numbers up. If you haven't subscribed, do it, man. Just please. All right. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.